I'm going to explain it in, a, in the course of the next 10 minutes or so, um, a lifelong interest uh, in the inspiring life story of my great-grandmother Alice Hawkins and uh, how probably, without my initially knowing when I first started, how over the 15 years the awareness of what Alice uh, strove to achieve in her life um, has led to you know, academic research with students, uh, some theatre productions along the way. Uh, it's grown and grown and, and so I'm going to relate the story uh, over the next few minutes. Um, I first, let's, let's find out where we are on the clicker. I first learned about this when I was uh, six or seven years of age, because I'm a generation of, that I am, the age that I am. Uh, I would go around my grandfather's house in the school holidays and granddad would tell me about his mother Alice. You know, my granddad used to tell me of the whole family going on the marches with Alice in our hometown of Leicester. The, camp, the suffragettes would march on a Sunday morning down into the marketplace and the whole family supported Alice in her strive for the vote. Uh, and Grandpa told me first-hand accounts, oral history, first-hand accounts of being there. Heckle, you know, how the men would heckle the women, heckle his mother on the issue of why they wanted the vote. You know, why, should, why should they want this equal rights? Um, and, and I've always been inspired by Alice's story. Um, uh, there's my grandfather on the top right. There he is as a, a young man in the First World War. Uh, and here's my mum who will tell, tell me also stories of her Granny Alice. How she was such a fierce, determined woman. Quite difficult to live with, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's Alice with her sisters. Uh, Alice top left with her sisters, six sisters. She was one of nine children. Many people think of the suffragettes as fairly well-to-do ladies with time on their hands. Alice was none of that. Born into absolute poverty, one of nine children in Stafford, uh, came to married Mr. Alfred Hawkins of Leicester, like-minded left-wing socialists. And the one thing that Alice campaigned on right through her life, equal pay for the women in the shoe factories, where she worked, equal pay, 140 years ago. Here we are today still discuss, discussing that very subject. Um, but we've got some lovely memorabilia in the family. Um, on my side of the family, I'm now the custodian. I have a book of press cuttings that Alice had. Uh, within it, there's her bail warrant from 1907 when she was arrested outside Parliament. I've got 14 days in Holloway Jail. That's it, uh, press cuttings of the day. And lovely postcards that Alice collected of the women who she met and campaigned with. It's a tremendous collection. And then in 2003, I was asked by chance to speak to a local women's group where I now live near Wellingborough. And I decided to research Alice's life a bit more. Um, and for a series of contacts, I took my mum up to meet her cousin, Matt, who lives in Mansfield. They hadn't met for 60 years. And I went up one afternoon to talk to Matt and the family about Alice. And they showed me the lovely memorabilia that's passed down their side of the family. It's split two ways. Oh, sorry, here we are, some more postcards and what have you um, that we have. I've got this, this is a lovely postcard from a uh, handwritten postcard by Jenny Ball of Kennington in London. Dear Mrs. Hawkins, I hope you're quite well after your holiday at Holloway Castle. <laughs> <laughs> but let's come back to meeting Madge that afternoon. Madge and her family showed us during that afternoon visit in 2003 the memorabilia that they have split two sides of the family. It's truly outstanding, outstanding collection. Alice's sash, still with us to this day. Her hunger strike medal, when she went on hunger strike in Leicester Prison, still in its presentation case from 1909. Mm -hmm. A letter from Emily Pankhurst to Alice, a letter of condolence when Alice and Alfred Les lost one of their young children, my granddad's youngest brother. Um, Here's Madge and my mum, mum's now passed away, with what's called an illumination, which is a hand, a copper plate handwritten commendation to Alice, personally signed by Emily Pankhurst. So it's a tremendous collection. And through all the research I did, you know, I realised Alice's life story was truly inspiring. And so over the course of the last 15 years, I've spoken to groups, societies about Alice's life. Um, had a bit of fun along the way. The director of the film Suffragette, anybody seen the film Suffragette? Mm -hmm. Yeah, director of the film Suffragette, Sarah Gadron, invited myself and my, our daughter Kate to be in the film as extras. <laughs> Here we are uh, after the wardrobe, in fact on the day of filming. 
Um, I visit lots of primary schools because I think it's important to uh, enthuse young people in learning about rights that they have to, as a right today that were hard fought for by the likes of the women of this country a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. So with Heritage Schools, I partner up with Heritage Schools and visit schools on a voluntary basis, mainly in the Leicestershire area, and I, mainly primary schools, and the children are so enthusiastic to learn about Alice. I, I show them a PowerPoint, talk to them, fire questions out to them, um, and one thing that really does impress the school children, I give them an anecdote about the day of filming, when we were filming Suffragette. It was at Parliament, when um, Maud, the, uh, lead act, Maud, the lead character, goes to meet Lloyd George, they sat me next to one of the main cast, Brenda Gleeson. Lovely chap, lovely Irishman, told me he'd be a school teacher in Ireland until he was 33 and moved into acting. And I said to Brendan, I said, what films have you been in, Brendan? And he said, Peter, I was Professor Mad-Eye Moody in Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine when I tell the young yeah. children that I've spent the day with Mad-Eye Moody? This halo appears around me for the rest of the lesson, I can assure you. And of course, where were we in St. Tinnery Year 1? You know, I'm a level-headed management accountant by... I mean, someone's got to be a management accountant, haven't they? I'm a level-headed management by, accountant by profession, profession, but I actually think I've been guided in life. You know, 15 years ago, 2003, a little bit longer, 16 years ago, being asked by chance, standing up, speaking to a women's group about Alice, feeling truly inspired, taking that on large number of groups, large number of schools I visit to, never lost that enthusiasm. Six years ago, we were asked by chance, I was asked by chance to, to join a campaign, just two of us, myself and a city council minister, to have a statue of Alice. You know? And I thought, well, it'll be a tough call to raise the funds for the statue, but we'll have a go. And we did. We got a single benefactor. Who was the benefactor? It was the businessman who owns the old shoe factory where Alice once worked. Uh, student accommodation for De Montfort University. He, he gave us a single donation. And so, to come back to this, 15, 16 years ago, I had no real concept that 2018 would be centenary year of women first gaining the vote. But in actual fact, everything I'd been doing over those years, raising the profile of Alice, visiting schools, enthusing young people, going on a, on a campaign, we suddenly realised for 2018 we were leading the way in the country. Leicester became a centenary city. Off the back of what government already knew we were doing, they gave us a £200,000 grant for further activities during the St. Tinnery year. It was fantastic. And so, whilst many cities wanted to have a suffrage statue in 2018, we were actually there. This was unveiled, the statue of Alice Hawkins in the Leicester Marketplace, on February the 4th, 2018. February the 6th being in the St. Tinnery. So it was tremendous to be able to do that. It was a truly proud occasion. Our daughter's there one of the four women unveiling the statue, lovely bronze statue in the Leicester City Marketplace. And what else did we do? Well, you've looked at the collection very briefly this evening. Um, I'd met over the years the curators of Parliament, and back in 2016, they asked me to go down to meet them, and they said, we're, doing, we're planning a major exhibition in the summer of 2018. Um, voice and vote, women's place in Parliament, would you be interested in loaning the memorabilia? So I said, well, I'll have a word with my cousins and what have you. But I said to Mari and Melanie, I said, you must come up to Mansfield to see the collection. Now, I'll bring my set of the collection down to you, but I suggest because of its, uh, you know, its priceless items, come up to Mansfield and have a look. And I met them a month or two later, back at Parliament, and they said to me, uh, Peter, thank you very much for asking us to go up. You were absolutely right. Your family have perhaps one of the most complete collections in the UK of suffrage memorabilia. It's a, it is truly an outstanding collection. So, not only did we have a, Saint uh, have a statue of Melbourne Centenary Week, we also had um, Alice's memorabilia. There it is. There's the display within, within the Voice and Vote exhibition. And when I visit primary schools, I always say the same thing. I show them this slide and I say to them, if you could step into a time machine 
If, sorry, if you could visit Westminster Hall Parliament today and step into a time machine and set the dials back to February 1907, press go, when you got out of that time machine, you could look through the very doors at the end and see Mrs. Alice Hawkins of Leicester being arrested for the first time in her life for asking for the rights of women. And there we were in 2018, yards from Alice's first arrest, commemorating her achievements in life. Um, when the exhibition finished, uh, it, it was transferred up to the Leicester Museum Service and they ran a four month exhibition, the Alice Hawkins exhibition, there it is, the items were transferred up, a smaller exhibition but still at a local level, fantastic. And I uh, planned with the museum staff and we had a school visit programme right through the four months. I'd come in and speak about Alice and the children would have a look, we'd have a quiz, or we'd get them to vote and we'd generally get them enthused into learning of Alice and what the women campaign, why they campaigned. Here I am with a young actress, Ruth, uh, at the National Archives where we spoke. And in fact, a few years ago, although I always said I, I give a talk on Alice, a few years ago, I decided I'd visit the Edinburgh Fringe for a week of, in the spoken word section, a week at the Edinburgh Fringe of Alice. And I thought, it'd be good if I had an actress with me, perhaps speak Alice's words. Um, it's developed very, very well. Ruth's fantastic. Every, at various points, as I talk, as I talk, enthusiastic about Alice's life and I move through these stages of her life, Ruth then comes in and speaks Alice's words. You know, her prison notes, her, the, uh, the letter from Emily Pankhurst, her address to Lloyd George. It's all documented. Every single word that Ruth speaks is documented. Now, if I had your skill sets, that is the basis of something far bigger. Don't quite show, I'm sure what it is, but at the level I have it developed, it's very, very popular. Uh, Ruth is truly fantastic. She's, she put a it's gone from a talk to a spoken word show, but it could go further and further. I don't have the skill sets to do that. And where will we be this year? Well, coronavirus, uh, <laughs> put it to one side. Uh, this, this Sunday on International Women's Day, Ruth and I will be reprising our Edinburgh Fringe show from last year at the Leicester Guildhall. That's a fantastic location. I feel so privileged to be invited. It's the, one of the oldest timber frame buildings in the UK, 1390, visited by William, William uh, Shakespeare on a number of occasions. And Ruth will be walking down those steps on the right this, this, uh, this Sunday to interrupt me in my introduction. <laughs> it will be, it'll be great. Uh, there's Ruth on the, on the Royal Mile. Uh, so we're going to the Brighton Fringe in May. Uh, we wouldn't take three months away, you're already sold. Uh, tickets, I'm quite impressed actually at the, at the, and I've linked in with the Mary Clark statue appeal down in Brighton, they, they, they want their own statue of, of their own local suffragette, quite rightly I've linked in with, with, the, with the appeal down there and then hopefully we'll be back at the fringe this year so I've always found it a truly inspiring life story and the important thing is that Alfred, her husband supported her 100% Alfred was a founder member of the MPU, the Men's Political Union, which was affiliated to the suffragettes. He was a founder member. Uh, and so Al Alfred, said, Alfred heckled Winston Churchill on a number of occasions at public meetings when the women weren't allowed to go in. You know, he, he went in, uh, he, on, on one occasion he was throw, physically thrown down the steps of the meeting hall in Bradford. He was in prison for a month. He was awarded £100 damages in a, in a civil court. When I first met Madge, I said to Madge, a hundred pounds Madge, a hundred years ago, whatever did Alfred do with it? She said, he drank it. <laughs> <laughs> absolute words. <laughs> but with Alfred's support of Alice and the children supporting as well, my granddad included, I've always felt totally at home on speaking on this issue of women's rights. And I thank the likes of, of uh, Naomi for bringing me into the circle, really. Uh, you know, I speak at many groups and events whenever I can. People used to say in my early years, you know, but you were a man. But I can't, I just feel, I just feel I'm there. I, 
I don't see any difference. You know, it goes back to my great grandfather, isn't it, and his support of me this um, I've just got on. How are we doing for time? Just about there. Yeah. Okay. Just about there. So. Um, uh, just to finish, though, that as the, as the awareness of Alice has increased in particularly the Leicester area, you know, lots of students have, have, have picked up on Alice. I often get asked to, to meet them from the Montfort University. Schools have done projects. Um, an actress, a mature actress, Elaine Pantling, has done Alice in her shoes. Uh, so, through my marketing Alice, if I can put it that way, it has enabled people in different walks of life to take her story off in their own way, either for research or for plays. Schools have done projects, they've done their own little plays, um, and that's great. And I always say to schools, to the children, think about this. When you're 18 years of age, you'll have the right to vote. Mm -hmm. After five terms of imprisonment, Alice was 63 years of age. Excuse me, which she finally got the vote. And the last thing, the last thing, Naomi will, will know this, the abiding memory that my mum had of her granny Alice when I first asked her, when I was first researching the tool, uh, Alice's life. I said, what do you remember about your, your granny Alice? And she said, well, when I was a young girl, Alice said to me, uh, my granny Alice said to me, Vera, you must use your vote. <coughs> we suffered for it. There we are. <laughs>